From a questionable story which shits on the legacy of beloved comic book heroes to regressing quality and a horrific monetization plan, you must know the game that I'm talking about today. You've seen the memes, you've seen the reviews, and most of all, the backlash surrounding Rocksteady's new title, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. I'm what's commonly known among these parts as a lurker, but uh, after researching the abomination being vomited onto the Steam marketplace, it really inspired such a deep sense of disgust that I decided to start making videos about the industry which I once loved and uh, share my view on why it's becoming something which I've grown to love less and less over the years. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Jay and I talk about the gaming industry, product design and business. There are many issues plaguing this game, but in this video I'll focus on a few of the glaring issues which stood out to me because some of the practices that the studio adopted are very much contrary to the well-established norms of running a business and selling and marketing a product. The first thing I want to talk about today is the lust for revenue outweighing the want to, ve to develop a great product. Well, this in itself isn't wrong as businesses will need a growing pool of customers to expand operations and deliver bigger and better things. However, this is a massive problem when the desire for new customers and revenue outweighs the desire to develop a great product or service that sells itself. The execs at Rocksteady really fell victim to lusting over all those new customers and potential revenue opportunities, so much so that they even refused to send out review copies to any publisher or content creator. Funnily enough, this comes as a vain attempt to hide the poor quality of their upcoming release. Refusing to issue review copies itself isn't really unheard of as publishers notably avoid sending review copies to publishers and influencers who don't really shy away from being critical of the games that they receive. What is suspicious about this is that they refuse to issue review copies to even the most lenient of game reviewers like IGN who have rarely scored games below a 5 out of 10. This leads me to believe that the leadership at Rocksteady saw the mess that they had on hand during the final demos and playtests, and that was so bad that they feared even letting IGN get their hands on it. They then scrambled to do anything they could to prevent news of this from getting out to their customers, and this basically manifested in the studio refusing to re issue review copies to all publications and content creators. However, the executives who made these decisions were short-sighted, and soon Rocksteady fell victim to the Streisand effect, where the plan to cover up news of the poor product ended up sparking numerous articles about the strange decision made by the studio around such a hyped-up release. Naturally, this raised concerns over the quality of the game, which turned out to be fully justified as the product launched half-baked. And this really just goes to show how far the Rocksteady of today has really fallen from the team that gifted the gaming world with the outstanding and timeless Arkham games. The next thing which I would really wanted to talk about is the monetization taking priority over function. There's nothing that turns me off more than having to play games with an awful user interface. If you haven't had the misfortune of watching any gameplay or god forbid actually playing the game, allow me to enlighten you. What you see on screen now is a small snippet of the game. Can you even make out what's happening on screen? The indicators themselves have indicators, the font is disgusting and unpolished with jagged edges and even fonts of different colours and font types all mishmashing on top of one another. The bottom line is that you can't even make out anything on the screen because of all of the visual noise. It baffles me that the leadership of the development team seems to have decided that less is more is just a figure of speech and shouldn't have, shouldn't have applied this theory when they were building the UI. This looks more like the Elden Ring UI meme where there's just too many things on the screen all at once and at least that made me laugh. But do you know what UI works fine? I'm glad you asked my friend because it is the in-game shop, of course. Just take a look at the screen right now and tell me what you see. Exactly. One actually feels decent to look at while the other makes you feel like you're frying your retinas for blowtorch. How is it possible that the approaches to UI design for both of these menus are so fundamentally different from one another? This might be a long shot, but I sincerely believe that the reason for such a huge difference is that the team at Rocksteady placed all of their top talent into developing the shop's UI and improving the overall experience of browsing and shopping to make it more palatable to the player. 
This is further exacerbated by the fact that the servers for this live service game model were horrible on launch day, with streamers playing the game experiencing disruptions and forced disconnects. These two factors basically indicate that Rocksteady's management prioritized getting the game ready to receive the player's critical information rather than functioning as intended on launch. This leads to players being even more dissatisfied with the release and from there, it's just downhill all the way. The last thing which I really wanted to talk about which uh, robbed me the wrong way was the predatory monetization tactics which they clearly, clearly forced into the game. It is already a full priced game with multiple deluxe and legendary upgrade packages. All of these packages can easily cost up to $100 and still ships with an additional cosmetic option that you can buy using real world cash. Now, this isn't outrageous because free to get play games like a Genshin, Fortnite, Honkai Star Rail and so on make use of in-game transactions as their main source of revenue. Where it crosses the line for me is the fact that the games were fully priced and the most expensive legendary editions of the game don't even come with everything the game has to offer on launch. Paywalling features that have already been shipped in your game just to nickel and dime players out of uh, 30 to 40 extra bucks is not a sustainable business model when the game itself is so unfun to play. Next is the actual mechanics of the in-game store. According to articles online, 2000 of the in-game currency is equivalent to around 20 US dollars. Next, when browsing the shop, you can see that the cosmetics are priced anywhere between 1100 to 1400 of the in-game currency. This in itself is an example of predatory pricing aimed at getting you, the player, to think, hmm, if I spend 20 bucks to only buy one bundle, why not spend 30 to buy two, maybe even three more? You can see why this is predatory as it's geared towards getting players to spend the most money possible in the in-game store. And on a side note, Looking through the cosmetic store on launch, are these bundles really worth the price of a double A game title? I highly suggest to go buy Fallout New Vegas or Mass Effect 2 with the same cash you'd spend on a goofy set of tights for King Shark anyway. I promise you that you'll get at least 100 times more enjoyment out of those games than this. With all that being said, it really makes me sad to see the video game industry I grew up with morphing into something unrecognizable. Make no mistake, the failure of Suicide Squad will bring with it dire consequences to the team at Rocksteady who were led into this mess by greedy management, misguided development philosophy and a terrible customer relationship management practice. In my eyes, while the development team bears some responsibility for putting out such a half-baked product, the main blame really lies with the leadership and the suits running the company. Now, Suicide Squad will likely end up as a commercial failure just like Forspoken, earning the executives nothing except the reputation of running one of the greatest studios in the world into an early grave. Mark my words, within the next 6 months or so, you will see that Rocksteady will either undergo a round of massive layoffs to cope with the financial stress, or be in talks with bigger pub publishers for a merger and acquisition. As someone who has actually went through a round of layoffs before, my heart goes out to the people affected by this situation. It is never a fun place to be in. Again, this is an unfortunate outcome of hiring the wrong people to lead and direct, prioritizing all the wrong things when what we gamers really wanted was just a great game and to be able to escape the daily stresses of life. At least, those are my thoughts on why Suicide Squad is an uh, overall defective product that will likely spell doom for the once great Rocksteady Studios. Please do let me know what you think in the comments below and if you like what you saw, feel free to leave a like, subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.